What is good, everybody? This your boy Mike Jax with ESP Realty based out of Orlando, Florida. So I am making a video of my top five tips um, when you get ready to switch brokerages. If that's something you're thinking about, whether you're a brand new agent or an experienced agent, this is applicable to you, okay? So let's jump into it. Tip number one, you definitely wanna ask about the commission split slash all the fees to be paid at that new brokerage. So what does that mean? It means you wanna know how much you're gonna get paid being an agent there. Um, at ESP, for example, all of our agents, once they you know get out of the mentor program or if they didn't come into the mentor program because they had a lot of experience, all of our agents started at 80-20. Now you can go up to 100% once you cap, but we all start at 80-20. Every brokerage doesn't operate like that. Some brokerages start off at a 60-40 or a 50-50 or a 70-30. They can have various splits based on how many transactions you do. So make sure you know what that brokerage uh, split is and how their model is for their splits because some of them don't pay as much or some might have different uh expectations so make sure you check into that and also you want to make sure you know all the out-of-pocket fees that are uh the expenses to be paid because some brokerages might have an annual fee or they might have additional fees you want to know about the eno insurance how much that is so once you factor all that in then you can kind of budget to see if it's a good fit for your budget uh if you plan on transferring or switching to another brokerage tip number two definitely make sure you learn the model of where you're at I can't tell you how many times I see agents at all kinds of brokerages that leave their brokerage and then they come back. And then I ask them, hey, why do you go back to your brokerage? Like, you know, what, what made you come back? And then they'll tell me like, hey, I didn't even know my brokerage offered this and this is what I was looking for. And it's crazy. Some people will jump into a brokerage and three months they're gone. And the reality is they didn't even know what their whole brokerage offers. So make sure you learn the model of the brokerage that not only are you currently at to compare to the brokerage you plan on switching to because you might find the new brokerage or the current brokerage is better based on their whole entire model, okay? Some people just join because they're like, I, I want good training or they give leads, but no more than that, no a lot more than that. And speaking of leads, that goes to tip number three. Um, it's, it's challenging to say this, but there are brokerages that might have a lead program and they offer you leads, but they're gonna take a, a hefty percentage of your commission more than likely. So they're not gonna just buy the leads and just give you free business you're gonna have to pay them for those leads because they had to pay to get them. So make sure you know if they have those type of programs at their brokerages, make sure you also know how much of the commission you're giving up and find out their model and in, in, in the leads and how that works. But a lot of brokerages might not provide leads as well and that's not a bad thing. Uh, it's a go get a business at the end of the day. Just cause you get a lead doesn't mean you're gonna close. It just means you have an opportunity to close. So make sure you check on that. It's a good question to ask when you interview a brokerage, how do they get, you know, get leads and get business? Uh, a fourth tip is you want to definitely ask about the training slash mentor. And the reason being, I can't tell you how many agents come into a, a brokerage from where they were and they might have not had a lot of transactions. And then they come there and then they go back and call somebody from their old brokerage and they're like, hey, can you answer this question for me? This is why you want to get a mentor. That's what a mentor's job is, is to help you with a lot of those tough questions so you're not having to rely on other people at other brokerages. Not saying it's a bad thing if you ask for help, but that's the whole purpose of a mentor is to be able to help you when you need help and, and be able to give you some kind of guidance. And you definitely want to make sure you know about the training. Um, not every broker's training is equal. So many people get caught up on the brand name of a brokerage and don't realize it's all about who's training you and how they train. Does it fit your learning style and is it catering to help making you successful? Me as a certified mentor with EXP Realty, I always make sure I cater my training to the agents that I'm working with, not how I'm successful, but based on their learning curve and how they can successful, I meet them halfway because everybody learns differently. But not every brokerage does things like that. They might have a, a set way that they do things and it might work. It might be a set way and it brings success and you have to follow that, uh, that type of model that they have. But make sure you know what type of training they have at the new brokerage you're thinking about going to because you might get there and find out the grass is not greener on the other side despite all the stuff that they promote to you. And last but not least, my fifth and final tip, um, are you, you wanna ask the new brokers, are you joining a team or are you gonna be a solo independent agent? Not every brokerage has teams and not every brokerage uh, you know, does things effectively even if they do have teams. And the reason why I ask that is because when you're part of a team, especially being new, it's really good to have that support. Say you can't go show a house um, or you need help with an open house, you have a team to be able to support you. But if you're kind of experienced and you've done, you know, been across the roads in real estate and you kind of want to be solo and you don't want to pay team fees or have somebody over you where you're splitting part of your commission being on a team, you can go that route too. But just remember, 
if you're solo, you are literally solo. You might be able to get some help if somebody's nice, but hey, if you're not part of a team, that's kind of the one of the challenging things of being a solo agent. You're on your own. You don't have anyone there to help you as much. So I hope these tips help you. Um, these are just five tips. I'm not saying they're the only five things you need to do, but these are five things that you really want to uh, ask another broker that if you're planning on switching. And in these five things, there's so many subgroups of questions you can ask, like, do you have commercial real estate? You know, things like that. What type of real estate do you have? I didn't get into all that in this video, but those are sub questions within these questions you can ask. When I talked about learning the model and tip number two, those are things you can follow up with because sometimes agents might not want to do residential. They might want to do commercial. Then you get there and you're like, oh, wait, I forgot to ask, do they have commercial? Well, damn, now you got to go back to where you came from. And it's, it's it could be a little challenging. So learn the model in detail. Ask the questions that you want to know. And the more experience you get, you'll know what questions to ask. These are just some five questions to help you if you don't know what to ask. All right. Have a blessed day, guys. Take care.